Good morning, everybody. We're gonna do a little warehouse thing today. I haven't taken you over there. That's dirty. <laughs> I haven't taken you uh, over to the warehouse in a while. I have uh, some shuffling to do. I need to drop some stuff off from here and pick up some stuff from there and bring it here. So we're gonna do a little shuffling around. I also have a lot of uh, rough organizing to do over there. Uh, as part of like moving, I have been just like setting things there and not really putting them away nicely. So. I need to get back all of my flex space, which is my big open area that I can uh, work in and sort things in. Because as part of this, uh, this moving thing, uh, I haven't really put away all my lumber very well. So normally what I would do for my slab sales is I would just pick out the slabs that are sold, take them for final drawing and do it that way. Uh, right now, what I'm doing is any stack that has anything sold in it at all, I'm just having the whole stack dried and uh, doing it that way. So I don't want to like put stuff away here. <laughs> I'm getting out of putting things away after moving by uh, moving them somewhere else. <laughs> so I have uh, a, uh, um, a load here that I picked up last week that's been dried that I gotta bring over there. I have a load that's over being dried right now. And I have two more loads that need to go over to be dried. And a lot of that stuff needs to be sorted. So I gotta pull out the slabs that are sold already from my stacks and then like palletize them and ship them. So I need my space back. So that's what's, uh, that's what's going on today. Moving some stuff around, check out the warehouse, just uh, getting some stuff done. This is like a, things I don't normally show cause I don't know. <laughs> it's normally I'm too like, let's just get stuff done and not make a video. <laughs> so I'm gonna grab the, uh, the stacks that I had dried already and get those loaded back up on the trailer. Of course I unloaded them because I needed my trailer for something else. But uh, luckily it's pretty easy to just throw these things back onto the trailer. And uh, yeah, we'll get loaded up and head out of here. Okay, all set and ready to roll. Oh, my kids have too much fun playing out here. <laughs> all right, let's go. This video is brought to you by High Pressure Combustion Systems. And a little snack for my other helpers. Okay, we made it. Let's go, uh, let's go ahead inside and make a plan and wake up Forky. So this is my disaster of a warehouse. I've uh, been here just over a year now, so I have uh, 2,400 square feet. This 800 square foot area, or roughly a third, is pretty much dedicated to my chair kits. So I have uh, my inventory over here, and then the packing area over here. 
But uh, today, I, well, I do have to pick up some chair kits, but today I want to clear up this mess over here and uh, get it a little more organized so I can work <laughs> on uh, shipping some stuff out. So I need to get this stuff out of here because that's getting picked up this weekend. And then I have a workbench kit somewhere over here. <laughs> this one right here, that one's getting picked up this weekend as well. And then I have another workbench kit back here, which I said I wasn't going to surface anymore, but I'm, I'm crazy. <laughs> I like uh, punishing myself, so these are going to come back as well. They're going to get surfaced so they can go out as well. So I've got, the, I got a lot of things to move, like this giant air tank. <laughs> so as you can probably tell, this area becomes like the, uh, the dumping area. If I have something that needs to come to the warehouse, I just set it over here and leave. So I'm not here super long. So now I'm paying for it. <laughs> so uh, I think I'm going to just start moving some stuff around, cleaning up. And I got to make some space in here to bring in the stuff from the trailer. And then I got to get the stuff that's going to go onto the trailer out of here as well. So that would be interesting. You know, if I had my telehandler here, I could just reach over this and grab that, but <laughs> I gotta move it. I have been wanting to weigh the snowblower <laughs> for the mini skid steer. Probably with the, uh, the pallet, almost 700 pounds, probably like 680. So I think I'll stick this pile here up on the rack just to get it, you know, out of the way a little bit. I think uh, these chairs are not in a good spot. I sh I've got to move these samples somewhere else. So I think a better spot for the chairs is going to be on the chair kit side of the warehouse. Probably up there on this rack that's not being uh, used at all. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't use my pallet racks to their fullest potential, apparently. Get it? Fullest potential? The racks are empty. So I got a few things shuffled around uh, a little bit. Uh, just talked to the buyer for uh, all of this stuff and he maybe wants 
some of these things. So instead of picking up from the house, I'm just gonna meet him here this weekend. Uh, so I don't have to come back here and go through more slabs or whatever. So I'm just gonna set uh, his stuff aside for now. So this is working pretty well. I've got uh, some nice stack row things here. So I guess the only thing leaving today is gonna be uh, workbench kit stuff. So I'm gonna try and get back and grab that uh, other pair of bench tops behind this uh, air tank. This is the air tank for the uh, screw compressor, which is back there. So this shouldn't be too hard to get out of here. Just gotta move this tank out of the way. Got one stack of old bandsaw blades that probably should go way up there sometime but I'm not doing that today. And now I can get this air tank and stick it back in here somewhere. I think I'm just gonna stick it where this pallet is for now. But uh, ideally this rack would be all stuff I don't really need ever or super often. So the air tank can go in front here, just in front of the, uh, the screw compressor. And I can put this banding machine somewhere else. But uh, there's a lot more room in here now. Just a little bit of shuffling around. Okay, now I think I'm ready to go out and try and get the stuff unloaded off the truck and trailer and in here, which is, should be uh, an adventure in itself. Okay, now this part is uh, far less convenient than having a tail handler. <laughs> I'm spoiled now. So I think the last thing which I will do here is uh, get the uh, chair kit order ready to go so it's getting picked up this weekend. 
So I needed to get six of the ones way back here. So it's been kind of an interesting change from like the, uh, the last time I showed a lot of the behind the scenes chair kit stuff. That was all stuff that was being shipped out like as it came in. So I wasn't inventorying anything. This is uh, set up a little bit differently. I have uh, one pallet for every style or every skew with the exception of the most popular ones, which are uh, cherry number threes uh, and wallet number threes. Those are on two pallets. I used to have a lot of them, <laughs> like a lot of them. Uh, I put those up front because those, those are the most common ones that I would grab to the closest to the table. And then as you work back further, those are supposed to be the, uh, the less common ones, at least the less, least common ones according to what I sold during the pre-sale. Uh, and then I also kind of mixed things up by species because one of the other things that we learned uh, doing all those initial orders was that a lot of these things look the same. So if you can keep the species and the styles separate, uh, there's a lot, lot less chance for error too. So right now I'm putting together a six pack of uh, this chair here, uh, the high back style four. Seats. Get the rear legs. Crest rails. So now last, I need some back slats, or at least last for big parts. Let's see, three, four, five, and six. Now the last thing on the list is going to be the hardware kit. So I got the two style of corner blocks here in these barrels. So I'm gonna pull those out first and then get some screws ready. When I come pack uh, chair kits with my kids, this is their uh, favorite part. Max will climb in the barrel and stack them for me that way. Yeah, screws. So screws are something that I normally have pre-packaged, but uh, I'm all out of six-pack kits. So here's a, you know, a pre-packaged four-pack. My mother-in-law did this for me. She did like a bunch of them. And uh, I'm all out now, so I'm gonna make a couple more six-packs here. Five. So a six pack would be 108 of these. And I usually go to like 110, 112, somewhere around there. So that there are spares just in case. Hey, right on the money. Two more. Okay, next size. These are the screws that attach to the seats to the uh, corner blocks. Four of them per chair, six chairs, 24 of these in total, and a couple extra. So one of the uh, questions that I got a lot when I launched the chair kits was if they were you know, import or if they're made in the US. And uh, everything is made in the US except for these. I can't find a supplier of this style of screw that's made in the US. So these are Taiwanese screws, but everything else, all the wood is uh, 
U.S. made and manufactured from uh, you know U.S. trees, domestic trees. Okay, so these are ready to go. I got a nice six pack of number four walnuts. As far as this uh, chair cut packing area goes, it's definitely not the most efficient thing. It, it needs a lot of tweaks as I have been working here for a year doing this now. I, I've, I've had a good time trying to figure things out a bit, but at this point, I'm not doing enough volume for it to really make a difference for me to come in here and totally move things around. Like for instance, the boxes. That's, that's a terrible place for them. They should be like on the other side of the packing area. So, you know, packing stuff and chairs all kind of converge in one place. These are just, there's too many steps to get over there. And this roll of film should be probably over here somewhere, but it's uh, not a big deal right now. So I'm gonna get these out of here. I'm definitely gonna need my counterweight for this. <laughs> so I'm gonna, set my counterweight on this end and I can just end pick this whole thing and go set it on the trailer. So a decent progress, still quite a bit more to do, but you know, like that's going away soon. But that gives me all this room back again to bring in more material, sort it, and ship it out. <laughs> a lot more space once again. I got I still got a lot more organizing to do all over the place, but you know, at least I got this space back for now. So these made it back just fine, and if you haven't noticed this already a couple of days later, it's uh, Saturday, so I'm getting ready for on my pickups today. Uh, I gotta get the base material ready for this one, which just involves slicing up some uh, smaller pieces into uh, four by sixes, which I'll do in a little bit. I have to get the, uh, <laughs> I'll get the saw, and put it in the driveway and get the uh, blocks and cut them up, but I'll do that in a little bit. Some of you probably were wondering about this thing. This is a section of what is uh, probably, or should be the biggest uh, sugar maple in New York state. This is from Eric Duke. He reached out to me on Instagram about a month ago. He established a seven foot diameter uh, sugar maple out there and was looking for some help to get it moved and sawn. He, uh, <laughs> he got it craned out of the yard that it was in. It weighed 32,000 pounds, put on a flatbed and it's sitting in his uh, log yard now. And this section here is from the, uh, the upper part of that tree. So this was you know 20 something feet in the air and we're still at you know, right here is uh just over six feet here so we're gonna be cutting this up next week so sort of conveniently and uh randomly i guess he's actually heading out to a camping trip right now in north dakota which is uh my house is on the way literally on the way i'm right off the freeway so uh he uh he dropped off the log and he dropped his trailer that's his trailer over there and uh, when he comes back through on his way home, we're gonna cut this thing up and see what's inside of it. So that should be pretty cool. We have the uh, biggest cherry tree in Iowa here. And then we also have the biggest, uh, or a part of the biggest uh, sugar maple in New York here, which is pretty cool. 
So I'll probably just drop in some footage of uh, getting these things cut up. It's not that exciting, but some of you might uh, want to see that. A little bit of uh, sawmill stuff. So it's kind of like a, you know, a day in the behind the scenes kind of stuff, I guess. Stuff I don't normally show. It's a lot of, you know, driving around and moving stuff. That's a, that's a lot of that stuff. Welcome to physical products land. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to do it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about the warehouse or any other thing or whatever, <laughs> please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy answering any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking. Let's go to Sawmill. Well, there we go. There are the uh, base pieces for this bench top. So it's a full bench kit. And uh, that's about it for this one. Have a great day, everyone.